Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for today's webinar. My name is Kelly Keaton. I'm with Perceptive Software. I'm a Sales Solutions Manager for Human Resources. And we're really excited today to introduce our customer, Masco Contractor Services, to have them share with you their experience. Um, the title 6,000 employees and 140 divisions, how Masco used content management to meet the paperwork challenge. What I'd like to do is introduce you today to our presenters, um, Catherine Wiggins and Cameron Miller. Catherine is a talent acquisition specialist with Masco Contractor Services. She's been with the firm for three years. She manages the system configuration for Masco's content management system, including new workflows, views, security groups, document types, custom properties, etc. She holds a BA in art history and an MS in management from the University of Florida. Catherine credits her versatility in the workplace to the fact that she worked as a rickshaw driver during college instead of getting an internship. Our other presenter today is Cameron Miller. He's been involved in managing human resources information systems for more than 10 years. As HRIS manager at Masco Contractor Services, He's responsible for the overall strategic direction of HR-related systems at Masco, including content management. He's a graduate of the Warrington College of Business at the University of Florida. And not to be outdone by Catherine in the versatility category, Cameron delivered sushi and sashimi for what he called classy Chinese food joint during his college years. He also toured the Jacksonville coffee bar scene after college playing the guitar and dazzling audiences on open mic nights with acoustic versions of classic British pop. So those are our presenters. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Cameron and Catherine. Thank you, Kelly, for that gracious introduction. Yes, um, thank you. Um, I'd just like to address um, the rickshaw comment. <laughs> I would highly recommend it if any of your kids are interested in doing that during college. It's a good gig. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I'd recommend the Jacksonville coffee bars, you know, so, um, but uh, enough of that. Today's agenda, we, what we'd like to do, so Catherine and, and myself, we've uh, partnered with ImageNow over the last couple of years, and we'd like to give you first an, an overview of what Masco Contractor Services is, kind of a lay of the land. Then we'd like to talk, uh, to talk to you about the case that we've made to our executive team for a content management solution. Um, once we, we presented that business case, obviously, if we're you know, partnering with them for two years, we, we did receive approval to move forward with the ImageNow solution. So we'll talk to you about that deployment experience that we had. Um, and then once we were uh, fully deployed with ImageNow, some of the solutions that we've rolled out since then and the benefits and the savings that we've, we've realized as a result. Um, and then finally, we'd like to talk to you about some advice that um, we could offer for those of you who are in the market for a solution like we were at the time, and maybe some, some tips that we would, would suggest for not only selecting a vendor, but also once you have that solution in place, how you can grow that solution. And I think um, Kelly will wrap, wrap today's call up with an overview of Perceptive Software, which uh, is the company uh, that uh, offers this ImageNow solution. So, So Masco Contractor Services is a group of independent companies and is part of a parent company by the name of Masco Corporation, which is based up in Taylor, Michigan. So Masco Corporation is primarily in the manufacturing industry. Some of the, uh, the companies or subsidiaries of Masco Corporation are probably products that you know if you visited a Home Depot or a Lowe's store recently. So companies like Bear Paint, uh, Delta Faucet, Craft Made Cabinetry, those are a few of, of our brands and there are several more. Uh, so predominantly manufacturing, but then there's also a part of the business that is service-based and that's what Masco Contractor Services is. So Masco Contractor Services is based in Daytona Beach, Florida and is one of the leading national installers of residential insulation. And then there's a few other core products such as fireplace, gutters, garage doors, closet, shelving, storage system, things, anything basically if you were to think of a house being built, anything that uh, you would do to that house after you paint it, chances are that Masco Contractor Services has um, their fingers in that business. So we're located in most major metropolitan cities throughout the United States. I think there are, today there are about 150 divisions 
Um, and again, part of Masco Corporation, which is a Fortune 500 company. So that should give you kind of an idea of, of Masco Contractor Services and how we integrate with, with Masco Corporation. So what you're looking at here is, is exactly that. It's basically Masco's brand map. So in the center you've got, you've got Masco Corporation, and then you'll see that the red, the orange, the blue, and the green are all in that manufacturing space. So the companies that I was mentioning earlier, like Bayer and Craftmade and Delta, those are all companies, and you'll see the other ones listed here as well. Over in the blue section, the navy blue in the bottom left, you'll see Masco contractor services, which is part of a few service-based companies that Masco has today. So the ImageNow solution is actually deployed at Masco contractor services and nowhere else in today's footprint. So quick lay of the land for, for uh, Masco contractor services, and I'll be using, I'll probably abbreviate that to MCS. So when I say MCS, that's, that's Masco Contractor Services, and again, we're based in Daytona Beach, Florida. So today we've got 6,000 employees, and we're spread across 140 divisions. Um, the, uh, there are two shared services functions at Masco Contractor Services. There's one that's based in Daytona Beach, and there's also one that's based in Taylor, Michigan. We're actually going through an exercise to combine those two and combine systems so there's probably going to be some opportunities for us down the road to leverage the ImageNow solution and roll that out to our other operating companies. But, but in today's, um, it, it, the way it exists today, that just solely exists in, in Masco Contractor Services down in Daytona Beach. So 6,000 employees, probably mid-sized company, but you can see on here 2,500 new hires are processed annually in our organization. So um, we definitely suffer from pretty high turnover which for, for those of you who are listening and on the call, if you're part of an organization um, that, has, that hires installers to crawl up into attics, especially in the southeast during the summertime when it's 140 or 150 degrees, you can probably sympathize with our HR department who's processing all of those transactions. It's definitely not the easiest thing to do to keep, keep that type of worker engaged and, and excited about what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So we find ourselves having to to restaff on a continuous basis to kind of to, to replace the workers that have left. Um, there's also some seasonality to the business. Obviously, in, in the summer months, you're probably doing a little bit more, particularly since we're operating across the country in some of those northeast divisions where you know, you're not able to work if there's too few snow on the ground. So we do kind of to gear up when, when business picks up, but I wouldn't call it a, a seasonal workforce. Um, I think the, the actual number of hires is, is truly a, a factor of attrition, not so much, you know, the, the furloughing employees or the seasonality type of work that we're doing. Um, and then of those 2,500 new hires that we're processing on an annual basis, we're collecting that information at the regional division office, which is in one of those 140 divisions um, throughout the United States. That paperwork is, is collected, so the signatures on those documents are collected out in those field um, divisions, and then they're sent to the Shared Services Center in Daytona Beach, Florida, and stored here centrally. So looking at MCS and looking at the, the HR department, so we're going to focus today on, on human resources and how we have ImageNow. We'll, we'll mention a little bit later in the call that we've, we've actually got it deployed in our AP group as well, but, but Catherine and I are, are kind of the experts on the HR side, so that's kind of where we'll focus. So looking at MCS's org, org chart for human resources, it's probably, for the size of the company we are, it's probably similar to, to you know, something that you see or you have in your business. Um, the, the kind of the difference that, that we have is we've got a shared services arm that actually operates as a, a standalone company. So what you see on the yellow side is a company called My Service Center. We're supporting Masco Contractor Services. It, it, there's a director of shared services that's the head of that organization, and then you can see there's about 20 or so people that make up that My Service Center group, and that's really the administrative components of HR. So we're doing the hiring, the transactional work, uh, we're paying those employees, processing benefits for them, um, doing the tax calculations on the payroll, and then there's also an HRIS function which handles some of the systems 
we use um, a major ERP system called PeopleSoft um, that's integrated with ImageNow, but some of the other systems that, um, aside from ImageNow that we use, that's kind of administered and handled by that HRIS group as well. And then over in the blue section, you'll see that there are more, you know, what I would call more strategic functions of HR, so talent development, employee relations, safety, um, and then there's an overall director of human resources with some staff underneath them. And, and that's about another 15 or so people as well. So that's kind of the structure of human resources. That's kind of the, these are the core users I would, I would call that within the ImageNow application today. So some of our pain points. Um, this is kind of getting into, you know, what started us down this journey of, of acknowledging that we needed a better system than we had a couple of years ago. So again, 2,500 hires or rehires processed annually. So that, that rehire uh, word in there is actually kind of key because what we do, what we tend to do is we'll bring on employees, they'll leave because they'll, you know, they're tired of working up in an attic and blowing insulation in attics all day. They might go somewhere else and then come back to us. So there's a lot of rehire activity, which unless you have all of this documentation stored electronically, obviously is a major pain point. So if you can envision someone taking a, a Manila folder and going downstairs and trying to retrieve documents and adding it to that folder and coming back upstairs and putting it in a different filing cabinet, that's the kind of activity that we see or we saw, excuse me, on a on a day-to-day -day basis. And then each one of those hires has an 80-page uh, collection of documents that's stored in its own separate folder. So fortunately, we have someone in our HR department who manages that or did manage it at the time, who was very particular about the order of all of those documents. Everything had to be, you know, alphabetically organized and stored. So there was a definite system to the madness, um, but it, it definitely wasn't easy. And without that person to kind of manage that, we, I, don't, I don't see how it was possible, really. Um, and then many manual steps, obviously. So that person wanted, you know, the I-9 form to be before the W-4 form, but after, you know, the acknowledgment form. And so there's this specific order to all of these documents. Everything was ordered by division in, in a certain filing cabinet, alphabetically by name, and so there's a lot of structure to it. Um, but again, very difficult and very manual process to both create those and then retrieve those folders as needed when, when we saw rehire activity. A few other pain points, audits and subpoenas, um, what we looked at, and these are really specifically with human resources. So if we had an I-9 audit or uh, we were subpoenaed for information to provide to an auditor and required some type of transactional backing, you know, why this person received this, this increase or something like that. Those types of, um, of audits, what we realized was that that was costing us over $25,000 a year, and that's just in, you know, how long does it take for someone to, to receive that request and go and fetch that information and present it and massage it, do whatever they needed to do in order to, to pass that audit. Um, and I don't think we dug very deep to get that 25000 That was kind of surface level. We mentioned a few that we knew we, we regularly did, and that, those were like the I-9 audits, and I think there are a few others. Um, another pain point was that those documents uh, that were, and specifically the, the, um, for the new hires, there's that 80-page document. There's also other documents that we're filing within Human Resources. And the off-site storage expenses for those, um, mailing those documents if they needed to be mailed into home office if they were in a, in a paper form, um, filing those documents. So you, you're talking about folders and filing cabinets and, and the cost of off-site storage and all of that. That was easily $100,000. And again, not looking at everything, just looking at a few things that we knew we were going to transition over to a paperless environment by using ImageNow right off the bat. Um, Aside from those three, um, and really looking at when we started to get into how are we going to build a business case for this, we looked at four or five additional areas. Performance management was one. Uh, the sales compensation, we've got about 500 sales reps in our organization that are spread out across the country. Those each require an annual sales compensation agreement to be filed. And each one of those needs like three or four signatures on it. So just FedExing that document from point A to point B to point C and then back to point A um, you can imagine it's certainly a, an easy business case to make um, for, for digitizing that process. Payroll was another area, payroll tax, and then employee relations. So, so 
so we knew we needed a solution. We just didn't know, you know, what that solution was. And actually, to be honest, we learned about Perceptive Software at a PeopleSoft user group, so a, a regional user group um, that we went to. They had a booth there, and, and we saw a demo of the system. We came back. We showed that demo to a few people um, within that. It, if you revert back to that slide where we had the org chart with the yellow section where it was kind of that administrative team, showed that system to all of those people um, who we knew would be kind of the core users of that application and got them excited about it. We mentioned it to you know, a senior leadership team and said, hey, does this sound like something that is worth exploring? We got their support. Then we just needed to come up with a business reason why it made sense to do that. So we conducted a formal RFP process. We looked at ImageNow, obviously, was one of those, the vendors that, or excuse me, Perceptive Software was one of the vendors that we looked at. We also looked at two others. Um, we didn't want to go and say, hey, we'd like to, to, to implement this solution. It's going to cost us this amount of money, and then have anyone come back and say, did you look anywhere else? Did you price shop? Did you, you know, look for, for another um, application, at least that comparable to see if you know, this is the right one? So we looked at two others. And we got some input from some other people that we knew had systems in place, so we kind of knew what we wanted and what we didn't. And so our next step was we brought in um, Perceptive Software and those other two, and we did on-site demos. And that was kind of where everything became very clear for us, is when we saw what ImageNow could do, and not only in, it wasn't a staged environment. And so really the key differentiator, and it's up here, is the ease of integration that we saw demoed on site when we brought Perceptive Software and asked them, we brought them on site and asked them to, to show us a demo of their application. So we kind of knew we'd seen a, you know, a, a demo on their website, but really hadn't seen it work in action in our live environment. And so they came on site, and what they did was they, within five minutes, they linked their system up, their test ImageNow system up, with our test. PeopleSoft HDM solution, and that's all it took, literally, is five minutes to link those two systems up, and they were showing us how if we had an employee pulled up in our, our human resources application, how, we, how that was integrated with the paper documents that would be stored in the ImageNow system, and how easy it was to both index those documents and then retrieve those documents from our core human resources system. So it wasn't staged, it wasn't, they didn't have any, you know, anything, they didn't have what I'd like to call like, you know, gerbils behind the scenes running on these wheels and, and churning out all this, you know, this stuff. And it was all, you know, a dog and pony show. This was real in our system and they did it in a matter of five minutes. So when we saw that, and I've been, I've personally been involved with, with human resources applications for a number of years. So when I saw that type of ease with integration, I knew that that was key. Because one of the things that I've seen with other systems is, you know, they can show you all of the bells and whistles within an application, and you can even bring in, you know, a vendor, and they can, you know, they'll charge you, I'm sure, a lot of money to do um, professional services and set things up for you. But long term, if you're not able to support that and you're not able to grow that, then it's not going to work. It's never going to take off. People aren't going to use the system. It's not going to go any further than, than day one when you first put it in. But I knew, and I think Kat knew also, that, if we were to implement a solution that we could easily integrate, so whether it was our PeopleSoft application or whether it was, you know, we're using Oracle ERP or some other, even, even Outlook or some of these other applications, it didn't matter what it was. If it took five minutes, we could do it and we could set that up. Um, and and that's, that's, that's when we realized, hey, ImageNow is the vendor that we want to select for this. So once we knew we wanted ImageNow, then it was just a matter of proving out whether that, that solution was going to save us enough money and offset the cost, you know, to purchase it. So that's when we presented our senior leadership team with a business case um, that looked at it, at, and I think the next slide will show you, it looked at both the hard savings involved and the soft savings. So the, um, the, the, did we, I'm not sure if we, did we skip a slide or? Maybe. may have taken, okay, so I'm sorry, yeah, so I'm sorry, so there, I thought there was another slide in there, excuse me. So we looked at hard and soft savings. The hard savings that, that we found were really the things that were paper-based, printer-based, ink-based, the cost of off-site storage, anything that there was a hard dollar that we knew if we didn't have that piece of paper, if we didn't have that printer or that ink 
or that off-site storage expense on a monthly basis, that was hard savings that we could say, hey, this is what we're going to save if we, if, we, um, if we purchase image now. And then all the soft savings was used as kind of filler that, you know, and, and what I would classify as the soft savings would be, you know, if we don't, if it's not taking us, you know, two hours to find a document and we're having to pay a salary for that to that person who's going out and fetching that document, you know, we can deploy that person elsewhere and, and have them work on different initiatives or things that are more strategic in nature or things like that. That's great to present to a senior leadership team, um, but I think at the end of the day they see through a lot. And unless you're going you're gonna to say, hey, today I've got 40 people in my organization and tomorrow I think I can have 20, they're not really interested in those savings. They're interested in the what am I going to immediately take out at, in terms of cost. And so that's kind of what we did. And when we presented that, we recognized that there was enough hard dollar savings to offset the cost of, to purchase image now, um, and that's what, the, that's what our ROI was built on. So once we selected image now, we got approval for it. The deployment for that solution was um, two-phased. So the initial deployment, we took just the onboarding process at Masco Contractor Services. So that's the 2,500 employees that we're bringing on, either new or rehiring them from um, from previously being here, in either case, we're, we're having to build that personnel file that has that 80-page you know, collection of documents in it. So it was both the document storage related to that business process, as well as you know, those 80 pages need to be filled out, but then they need to go certain places. You've got you know, one form needs to go to one group, and another form needs to go to another group. So how do we get those documents while they're in an electronic format to the people who need to interact with them and then ultimately back into this personnel file for them. That was our key business process that we brought ImageNow, or we brought Perceptive Software, excuse me, uh, on site to do our initial implementation. So their professional services helped us with that initial implementation, and it was between, uh, from start to finish, from the design through the actual implementation and testing phase, that was a two-week process. So if that gives you an idea of how quick they can come in and implement. Um, and, and that was, again, one business process, but that required setup of the system, the servers, the infrastructure, the security, all of that. So the business process was just kind of layered on top of all of that. At the same time, we had a separate team working on an accounts payable invoice processing uh, process where they're doing invoice matching. And I can't speak to that, so if there's anyone on the call that wants to know or has questions about what we're doing in AP, um, I could probably point you in the direction and have you speak to some other people, but we're really going to focus on the HR components of how, we've, how we're using ImageNow today. And then once we did that initial implementation, with the help of Perceptive Software, we took subsequent business processes and did those all internally. So we, we had them come in, we paid them, you know, the consulting fees to help us initially for those two weeks. But then since then, we've been able to roll out processes in our sales compensation group for performance management, um, do other document retention and reporting like the I-9 audits that we were talking about before, um, dispute resolution audits. So we've done all that without any external help. And, and we'll talk about some of those in a little bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this actually over to Kat here. What you what you see on the screen for any of those um, folks on the call have used like a system like Visio, an application like Visio, where where you see boxes and arrows and things like that. This this may not look too complicated to me. It it looks pretty daunting, or it, I I remember it did initially. This was pulled right out of our solution design document when we were building the onboarding process, and I'm going to ask Kat just to walk through this. Um, at a level so you can kind of understand what that initial two-week implementation, what we worked on during that phase. Okay, so uh, this workflow process um, was built to actually reflect the actual physical processes that we had in place uh, prior to ImageNow. So when you're looking at this, all of the arrows that you see represent was what was once a person uh, getting up from their chair walking over to another person and handing them a document. So again, this workflow looks very similar to a Visio process uh, for any of those of you who have used Visio, like Cameron was saying. And it also closely resembles the workflow designer you would use within ImageNow to create a new process. So uh, if you wanted to create a new workflow, you're essentially just 
dragging and dropping boxes and then drawing lines between them. So it's very non-technical and uh, pretty easy to pick up. So looking at our specific workflow here, you'll see that our process starts with an office manager in one of our uh, regional divisions either scanning or faxing the new hire documents to our HR admins here at the home office. So once the HR admins receive the documents, they put them into ImageNow and then label them so they become searchable. So that's what you see with the email attachments going to those employee screening linking boxes. So the labeling of the document uh, is comprised of them linking the document to that employee's record in PeopleSoft, um, which is the database system that we use. But you could use any application. So they simply just click a button, and all of the information from that record comes over to the document. So there's no real like data entry that's required. After they label the document or link it, as we call it, they link the document to a record in PeopleSoft, they route the document forward to the next person who needs to see it. But sort of the beauty of ImageNow is that based on the type of document it is, it automatically goes to the next person who needs to see it. So they don't, they essentially just click one button and it knows, okay, I'm a W4, so instead of the HR admin having to print out the W4 and then walk it over to the tax department, and wait for them to process it, they just press one button, the W-4 automatically goes to the tax person in the tax department. The tax person is then um, able to process it right there. And then once they're done with it, they go ahead and press one button, and it routes forward to complete, essentially exiting the workflow process. So like I said, the beauty is just based on the document type, it automatically goes to the person it needs to see, whether that be the tax department, or the benefits department, they get a little notification. They know to go into ImageNow, process the document, and then route it forward. So it's a very clean process, but like I said, it actually just mirrors the physical process that was going on um, prior to ImageNow. So after the document exits, exits the workflow, the process is complete. Thank you, Kat. So, um, I think one of the, actually, can we go jump back to that slide real quick? One of the things I want to, I actually want to correct Kat, because I think she said people were actually getting up out of their seat and, <laughs> and walking a W-4 form over to the tax department for the process. And I have a different recollection of that. I remember these little metal shopping cart looking things that would have the folders that were stored on this cart, and they were actually wheeling them over to the tax department, or the tax department would wheel the empty cart back so that it could be filled back no, up. No, you're so, right. It was a cart. So you were there, right about that. There's yeah. definitely cart involved. I, it's been a while since I've seen that cart, though, um, to be honest. I think it's we've taken on a new purpose yeah. now, I think. So maybe maybe that cart is being re reused in other departments that don't have <laughs> an electronic process like this now. So anyway, thank you. We can advance the slide. So just as a recap, it's it is really that easy. So it's an intuitive solution. Um, I wouldn't. I, I know we have up in uh, on the screen immediate adoption. I think it's definitely an immediate adoption for those people um, once they get over kind of that initial fear of their business process changing. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit and some tips that we have to help you get through some of those change management components. You know, like the person who. You know, they probably like their shopping cart, and they like getting up out of their seat and, and walking that over on a day-to-day -day ba uh, basis. So I don't know that it's necessarily immediate, um, but I think once once you're able to um, to engage that person with with the, the new business process and kind of get some buy-in from them, then certainly future processes that that you integrate with ImageNow, it uh, it does become an immediate adoption. Um, like we talked about before, very easy to integrate the ImageNow application um, with other systems. So we, we integrate it with PeopleSoft. Um, so in our world, PeopleSoft stores the, uh, the, you know, the employee ID, the name, the job code, things like that, anything associated with that person that we want to, um, to link to the actual physical document in the system within the ImageNow application. And so I remember back in the day, some of those you know, document management systems, you'd have to physically type in a social security number on the document or a name 
um, or a job code or whatever other values you wanted to associate with that document. In our world, we can have two screens up at once, the image now application on one and PeopleSoft open on the other, pull up that person's record and PeopleSoft, click a button, and it copies that information over. And then likewise, we can be within the PeopleSoft application, click one button, and have all of the documents that have already been indexed for that person be brought right up there on the screen. So very easy to integrate um, with PeopleSoft, and, and really what you'll find is PeopleSoft doesn't have a unique integration with, with um, ImageNow. That integration can exist with any, any type of system outside of PeopleSoft just as easily. Um, very easy to build on existing business processes, and that's really a factor of how easy it is to integrate with those other systems. Um, so I think the, we have up on here, as an example, we have an enhanced FMLA process. I think, Kat, you, you probably know more about that. Right. So um, once we had uh, initially put in the onboarding process and um, people began to adopt it and see how much easier it made their life, they wanted to um, implement that process for their own, um, you know, section. So, for example, the FMLA process. Um, we were just going to digitize the, the documents very simply. But then we found that um, after implementing it, if we just use, put in some filters, which were very easy uh, to do, we could basically take a few hours out of this person's day, uh, out of the work that they were putting in, um, because we found that what they were doing before for the FOLA process is having to go through all of the folders that they have for each person to see if it was time for them to pay their premiums yet. So every day they would go through, say, 50 folders to see if it was time yet. By just implementing a filter in ImageNow, they could just click a button and see everybody who was due to pay the premium at that time. So that take, took a huge portion of work out of that person's day and made a big improvement. And that was just very easy to do. It took about five minutes that up. Yeah, so that's one example. I mean, and those are, again, those are like, you know, you're going to have countless numbers of those examples. So once you have the system in place and the infrastructure and the users already, you know, using that system for other business processes, rolling out new ones seemed like we were doing that on a regular basis. So, yeah. um, and then it is really easy for our HR users. So, um, you know, it's easy as a, as a system that they're using on a day-to-day -day basis to both index documents and retrieve documents. It's easy for those folks. It's also very easy for our folks who don't interact with the system on a regular basis but just use it as a system to retrieve documents out if they're going to do a, you know, an audit out in the field or something like that. For one of our regional HR managers to, to log into ImageNow, or for that matter, they can just log into PeopleSoft and click a button and pull back documents out of ImageNow. It's very, very easy. So. Um, if we can advance the slide. So key savings, just to, as a recap. We've got increased productivity um, due to that, you know, the, the business processes that we had, our old state and our new state, vastly different with the ImageNow application. We're able to streamline those processes. So just like we did with the onboarding process and we, and we painted a picture about the cart and people pushing around paper documents. Or, or having to rehire an employee and having to go downstairs to a filing cabinet and retrieve a document and understand what, what's missing and what needs to be added to it, add those documents, then put it in a new filing cabinet for where we put all the active employees you know, at the time. Those, those, those days are over for us. And I, I can't say that we're entirely paperless in HR, um, but way, way different in, in two years since we've had Image Now, way, way different of of a state of existence than what we were two years ago. So that use of, of having an electronic document and workflowing that document to the people who need to see it and interact with it is obviously much more efficient than having to push carts around or having to walk and get up out of your seat and, and print and do all of that. Um, there's also a, a, a really um, important component of this is the increased compliance. And so I can honestly say that we have not passed audit in our day, not because we did things incorrectly, but because we couldn't prove that we did things correctly. We couldn't find that piece of document that said, no, we really did it, you know, we collected it. So anytime you have paper, obviously, or multiple pieces of paper, you know, because a lot of times people are making a copy of something and storing it somewhere else, and then that, that's taking on a life of its own and being added to, there's just a lot of inconsistency there, and there's a lot of opportunity to 
to lose that piece of paper and then not be able to reproduce it when you need to. So having something in electronic format where you can not only control, you know, that there's only one version of it, it's safely and securely stored. The people, only the people who should have access to that can have access to it. Um, there's, there's obviously, a, you know, a, a big component of that that's going to help with compliance. Um, and then certainly lower cost, which was probably the most important business case to make to the people who are writing the check to buy this, right? So we, we said that, hey, we can deploy, redeploy people on, on more strategic initiatives if they didn't have to spend two hours fulfilling an audit request. And, you know, you know there's been a couple times where we haven't been able to produce documents, and there's this whole compliance piece that you're going to benefit from. But at the end of the day, they wanted to know, is this going to save us money? Um, and so that's something that, that, you know, obviously we were able to do. So that the cost associated with any type of storage, handling, mailing, packaging, any of that is alleviated when you have a system in place like ImageNow. Oh, this is the magic slide I was missing. <laughs> so our business case, I'm sorry, our business case was for direct cost we looked at, and again, this is just reiterating what we talked about earlier. Our direct costs were that on-site storage, so we have a whole warehouse facility that's storing documents. That's filled to the brim, so anything that, that we can't put there, we have, we, we contracted with another company um, to store those documents off-site. We're paying a monthly fee to them for them to do that, or we were at the time. And then equipment and supplies, printers, paper, ink, folders, anything that you can imagine that would be needed in order to build out those personnel files and anything else that, that's in a paper form. So those are the direct costs. There's also this whole idea of indirect costs, which I don't want to say you should ignore. I just think it made sense in our world to, to kind of separate these. And I think the people who are making the decision to support this initiative were appreciative that we did make that separation. So the indirect costs were any, any type of, of wages that we were paying to employees that we thought we could save because that business process was going to be more efficient with ImageNow than it was pre-ImageNow. Um, so storage and retrieval time, if there were lost, misplaced documents, any of that we would have considered to be indirect costs. Okay. So top five pieces of advice. This is, I think this is Kat and I's favorite slide because um, there's probably some of you that may already have a solution in place. Um, some of you may even have ImageNow in place. Um, others may be in a situation like what we were in two years ago. So for those of you who um, are, are in the market for, for a solution like this or, you know, may already even have it or just kind of stuck as to what you do next, I think this, is, this hopefully will, will help you a little bit. So one of the, the, our first piece of advice that we would offer you would be to start small and grow your solution. So I think, you know, I've been on several projects where you, know, you gather all of the business requirements up front and you figure out you know, where all the gaps are and, and you just try to come up with this monster solution that covers all of those gaps. So we could have done that in, in this particular situation. We could have looked at, you know, we've got a lot of paper at Masco Contractor Services. Where, where can we use ImageNow? And let's, let's design a workflow process that addresses that need and we'll do it all in one big bang, right? Um, I think we realized that that wasn't necessarily the approach that we wanted to take. And, and the reason why was we thought that if we implemented one particular business process, that we would have enough in place by having, you know, we, we would need to have security in place. We would need to have the servers and the system and everything in place. That would all be kind of the groundwork to support anything else that we would deploy later. And we knew that we weren't going to do it perfectly, certainly the first time around, right? There's going to be a lot of things that we could learn from. Uh, after implementing it initially. And so I would strongly suggest, and that worked out really well for us, by the way, I would strongly suggest um, that you take a similar approach where if you're going to implement it for the first time, start with one key business process that you feel like you can get your arms around, that you think will have a major impact where you feel like you can get adoption from the users on, you can get people trained who you know are going to be using the system, and start small. Once you have that in place and you start to have some of the, you know, the people who are engaged in the process, they know how to use the system, people start to like it, you know, they like all of a sudden not having to push carts around anymore, that's when you can say, okay, 
we've got more that we can do with this system. There's endless possibilities here, like our, our enhanced FMLA process or the sales compensation thing or, you know, the 50 other business processes that we've rolled out since that initial. Okay. Number two. This is, um, I think, equally important, maybe even more so important. If for those, I guess you could probably do everything at once if you had enough time and resources, and I think it ju would just be more difficult. This, this one actually, I'm, a, I'm, I'm convinced that if you don't have this, um, it's going to make your life, you know, a disaster when it, when it comes to implementing a solution like this. So you need to have what we called an office hero. In our world, our office hero was Cat. So, what was important about Kat was that she took ownership of the system and she was on the HR side where all of these initiatives are coming from, right? So it wasn't somebody in our IT group, it wasn't someone, you know, external where we said, this is what we want and they've got conflicting priorities, they've got everyone else who's fighting for their attention and time. We've got someone who we know we can, we can deploy on this, who can be dedicated and can kind of take this on their shoulders and roll with it. That's somebody who not only you know, you can devote to that for, from the standpoint of resources, but who also has the trust of the users, who's already worked with those same users, and they look up to this person. They can say, you know, I'm, I'm, this, I'm a peer of this person, and this is a new system, and this person is going to help me get through this. So very approachable, very knowledgeable, and then time committed, too. I don't think, in, I mean, I've been in other, other, play, other, I guess, departments or other situations where we're deploying solutions similar to ImageNow, and if you have IT too engaged in that and too much ownership there, you know, at the end of the day, when they're going through their budgets and their initiatives for the year, one of their initiatives isn't going to be, how are we going to, you know, expand ImageNow functionality within human resources? Their initiatives are going to be, you know, how are we going to, like, decrease the number of help desk calls we're getting? Or how are we going to, you know, standardize the, you know, the active directory that we've got? And, you know, so they don't have the same priorities that we do in HR. And I think if you rely too heavily on that type of a resource, you're not going to have a lot of success when you're, when you're trying to take that stage deployment technique. And what I would like to add to that as well is that, um, you know, I uh, worked very closely with the consultants as they came in to implement that first onboarding process. And by doing that, I was able to learn how to create a new workflow. Like, they walked it through with me very closely. So after doing that one, I was able to learn how to do um, more, you know, within a week afterwards, I was playing around with it. And like I said, it's very easy to pick up. So I would agree with Cameron, this is not necessary and probably not um, the best practice to um, have them come in and do all the workflows that you want at once, but rather start with one, have somebody sit with the consultants and learn how to create those new workflows and then go from there. A lot cheaper too, to do it that way. <laughs> I, we, I can. I think we pay Cat well, but I don't think we pay her as well as we would <laughs> three or four consultants from Perceptive Software. So, okay. So three on the list is to think it through. So this kind of piggybacking on top of doing things, starting small and kind of growing the solution, is even though we started with our onboarding process, we didn't necessarily design all of the infrastructure around that process. We knew that this was step one, and there were going to be 50 steps after that. So we considered who our end state users would be, who would need access to the system, who would need access, how we could set up, you know, security and the folders and all of that structure beyond just what existed as part of the onboarding process. And I think if you don't do that, if you design it, if you do start small and follow our advice there and just do one process, if you tailor all of that administrative setup around that one process without thinking about the big picture, you're probably just shooting yourself in the foot a little bit because what you'll find is you, you might have it set up where, that, where it's functioning perfectly for that one business process, but then when you have another department that says, hey, I heard about this ImageNow solution, you know, do you think that it could help with this? You're going to say, well, yeah, but, you know, I've got all my security design, so you're going to see my HR documents and I can't let you have that. So really focus on thinking it through and think about what that end state is before you actually set all of that security up and, and, and everything else, how, who you're going to have as your office hero, all of those things are important and it should be based on what that end state looks like, not necessarily what that first business process looks like. So number four, um, for those of you who have been involved with 
with implementing projects, and this was, again, this was only a two-week implementation, but still, for a core group of users, this pretty much changed, you know, their, their life. I mean, not, not, their, not their life life, but their, <laughs> their life at work, right? Um, and for some people, I know, you know, life at work is actually their life. So, um, but it, it, it is helpful to engage those users who you know are going to be impacted most as early on as possible. So that's no, that's no secret. I'm not telling you something that, you know, somebody else who's gone through something similar like this hasn't told you before. Um, but you can mitigate a lot of the resistance from those teams by, I mean, we engaged them actually in that decision process. We showed them demos and we said, hey, what do you think? Before we even presented this to an executive team, we said, hey, what do you think about this? Do you think that you would like to have a system like this? Would this make your life easier? Doing that early on, obviously, strongly recommended. Um, you know, even if it could make perfect sense to you and I that this person will not resist getting up out of their chair and walking a document over or grabbing that metal shopping cart and, and that folder off the shelf and putting it on the cart and walking it over to somebody and then, you know, that end state where they don't do that, it might make perfect sense to you and I that that's not necessary and how hard would it be to convince this person who's doing that that they don't need to be doing that anymore. But you know what? That person who's pushing the cart around, they like doing it. For some reason, they like getting up out of their seat. They like going and having little sidebar conversations with the rest of their team. That kind of gives it, breaks up their day a little bit, you know? So you have to engage them early on. And I'm not saying they're going to adopt it right off the bat. I don't think it is an immediate adoption. For us, I don't know, Kat, would no, you say it? Was, it was certainly not an immediate adoption. Um, although I will say the people who resisted the most are now, um, strangely enough, the people who are always asking for new workflows uh, to be created. So, I mean, maybe it took, what, three months for them to adopt, you know, and fully come on board that this is a new system, it's better, and then for them to think about the other business processes that they have and see they make the connection be between how ImageNow can make their life easier in those business processes, and then they would come to me and ask, hey, can you go ahead and set one up for um, these audits that I do? And this is coming from people who resisted the strongest in the beginning. So they do come around because the value is, you know, very clear ultimately. So I think, you know, they do come around. So three, so three months probably, three, I would say maybe, and for some I think, actually for some of our users it was, it was probably, yeah. it was probably day one and for others, yeah. you know, three months. But Yeah, it varies. And that's probably, that's going to be the same in your, in your situation too, your organization. You're going to have people who are early adopters who don't mind change, like it, Rec immediately recognize the benefits of it and are fully on board. And then you're going to have others who you kind of have to push along a little bit. But And then lastly, our last bit of advice, and this kind of goes along with that start small and grow your solution, is to grow. You're, we're, we're cap we're, we were capable of growing it organically, and we're going to continue to do that. Um, and I don't see why there's any reason why that can't exist everywhere. As long as you work closely with the end users, you, they're the people who know their processes. So, you know, Kat, while she was, she's very close to human resources and the, and the people who she's working with on a day-to-day -day basis, she's not the one who's doing the, the, the check collecting for that FMLA process. And that's not really her pain point either. It's not her pain point because she's not doing it. So you really have to get those end users engaged in, in the system and, and have them be able to identify areas of opportunity where they can then approach CAT or whoever your office hero is in your environment and say, you know, hey, I'm doing things this way based on this other process that I'm using ImageNow for. It looks like there's probably, you know, something pretty similar where I could use that same tool and I can, I can integrate ImageNow in this other business process. Can you help me do that? Um, and that will take off like, like we, have, we saw here with the tree growing. I mean, it really does grow organically. We started with one process in human resources. And I can't tell you how many we have today. We went to over like 20 to 25 workflows we have now. So, and that's in, that's in a couple, you know, in a year and a half's time. And so there's a lot of, um, it's, it's important to engage those people. There's a lot of value in getting their buy-in, getting them used to the system with that one process. But then you're going to want to, and I don't know how much we even had to challenge them to come up with them. I think at the end of the day, Kat's right. Even the ones that were most averse to, to doing things a new way, were ultimately part of that group who came and approached her and said, hey, is, there, is this something that you think ImageNow can help with? So no need to, you know, to, to do it all at once. 
start small, grow it, and, and get those people on board so that they can, they can be the ones that are saying, we think that this, this will have an impact on this particular process. Okay. So, Kelly, well. I, oh, I was just going to turn it back over to you, but thank I think you, Kelly's Jeffrey. got a – thank you, Kelly. Both of you did an excellent job. Thank you so much. And what a great story. I think um, you really laid out from start to finish the process that you went through as part of the decision making and implementation. But I also really love the, the top five pieces of advice at the end. So I can't thank you enough for sharing that with the audience. And um, what I'd like to do is I'm going to talk for about one minute about Perceptive Software. But before I do that, I want to encourage you to ask questions on your control pa panel. We've already received a couple of questions, um, but I'd like to respond to those um, in just a minute here. So I'd like to share with you a little bit about Perceptive, and then we'll go to the Q&A. So Perceptive Software was founded in 1990, and we are a business process management and enterprise content management products and software. We have customers in over 30 co countries, and we have offices worldwide. And you can see that on the, the map there below with the little flag pins where our offices are. A couple of years ago, we were acquired by Lexmark. And we are, we are doing really well to expand our international business with Lexmark. It's a great relationship, but we still operate as a standalone software business unit underneath their umbrella. We have a 10-year compound annual growth rate of over 35%. So that's really great in this economy. We're really proud of that. And we're growing at a rate of four times the industry average. We're one of the top 10 largest BPM and ECM providers in the world. So as far as our back office solutions, back office meaning AP and HR, we have over 650 customers. And the solutions that we have for HR are really run throughout the life cycle of an employee. So it includes recruitment, onboarding, employee management, ESS, and offboarding. So it really includes the whole scope. Uh, customers, it really all sizes and scope. We have anywhere from 10 local users or to 10,000 global users. So it really can scale. We, we also integrate with any of the major ERP systems like Oracle PeopleSoft, SAP, Lawson, Microsoft Dynamics, ADP, um, and also right down to even a homegrown HRIS system. So that's one of the great things is we can integrate with, with virtually any system. We're also deployed in all major industries. You can see them listed there from healthcare to higher ed, insurance, banking, retail, manufacturing, public sector, and government. So that's a little bit of an overview of Perceptive. And what I'd like to do now is go to the audience and ask for a little bit of participation from you all. I have two questions to ask. First of all, <clears throat> you'll see them come up on your screen. Where are you in your search for a process and content management solution, if you are? So A, ready to purchase. B, evaluating one or more vendors. C, defining project requirements. Or D, no project at this time. So if you would, please go ahead and click the applicable one for you. We appreciate it. Let's give you just another minute here. It looks like votes are still coming in. OK. OK, the results here. It looks like 70% or no project. OK, a couple of you are evaluating. Some of you are ready to purchase. So great. Thank you very much for that. Let me ask one more. And the next question, pulling up here, bear with me just a second here. The next question is, what information would you find most useful about Perceptive Software Solutions? So if we could send you information, would it be a case study, a demo, a white paper, or a webinar? So begin voting now. Again, I really, really appreciate you doing this. And you can choose more than one, of course. You don't have to just select one. OK, great. Looks like webinars are good. Product demo. And as Cameron and Kat mentioned, that was a big part of the process that they went through. So thank you for sharing that. 
Okay, one last thing I'd like to share with you before we answer your questions are um, we have an upcoming IRAM show at the end of April, April 30th through May 3rd. I'm sure many of you on the call, and I just wanted to let you know, we'll be in Chicago for that show. Um, we'd like to encourage you to stop by and, and talk to us. So come see us in Chicago. Okay, so starting, um, starting with questions. It looks like the first question that we have here, um, and this is for Cameron and Kat, what did you do about existing employee files? Great question. So we had um, we had a decision to make. So one of the things that we asked ourselves early on was, are we going to try to scan all of those files, or are we going to you know draw a line in the sand and moving forward, are we going to start um, imaging new new hires um, and you know some of the new packets that we're that we're building? So we did a quick analysis and figured out that there's probably going to be too much to try to go back and do back scanning. So we left those in a paper form, and one of the one of the reasons why we did that is we acknowledged that because we've got so much rehire activity, there's going to be another opportunity to pull that folder out and add to those documents. And anytime we're going to be doing a rehire, is that's going to be the opportunity that we said we're going to we're going to put into Image Now. So we've got kind of a mixture right now, but since we've already been on for two years, pretty much the only thing that's in paper form are going to be the employees that were hired prior to two years ago that are still in the system. So just, at, just from the standpoint of time and resources, we kept that, knowing that our turnover is so high that there really just wasn't a lot of, of business reason to go back and do back scanning. OK, I um, have another question here. And it looks like we're getting short on time, too, so we'll go quickly here. Are you using any smart forms to import into PeopleSoft? No, not currently, although I see a huge value of implementing that. So it is something that we started to look at, but no, currently we are not doing that. OK, I have uh, one more here. Can approvals be escalated? So for example, if a manager is on vacation, does the approval roll up as part of the workflow? Um, you can set it up. That way, as the system is extremely uh, flexible, very configurable. So if that's something that you want to set up, you certainly can. OK, well, I'm not sure if it's cut off, but it sounds like we're at the end of our time. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. And have a great day. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you.